power is a universal language. I know a renegade soldier when I see one. For Complex News, I'm Hanuman Welch. We are barely two weeks out from the release of Marvel's next Temple franchise entry, the Brie Larson-helmed Captain Marvel. March 8th is the release date for what Marvel Studios is hoping will carry their decade-plus multi-film cinematic universe into its fourth phase. While critical appraisal of the movie has begun to slowly trickle in ahead of the lifting of Disney's review embargo, Captain Marvel is already being subjected to a vicious review bombing on Rotten Tomatoes. The review bombing campaign finds the audience comment section of Rotten Tomatoes brimming over with posts taking aim at the film and hoping to lower its overall score ahead of its theatrical release. Most of the comments take aim at a recent interview with Brie Larson and Marie Claire where she opened up about wanting more diversity in the film's press coverage and Larson's campaign to send underprivileged girls to see Captain Marvel. And she also spoke out generally about a number of trolls complaining that the film is a social justice warrior or SGAW entry. About a year ago, I started paying attention to what my press days looked like and the critics reviewing movies and noticed it appeared to be overwhelmingly white men. So I spoke to Dr. Stacy Smith at the USC Annenberg Inclusion Initiative, who put together a study to confirm that moving forward, I decided to make sure my press days were more inclusive. After speaking with you, the film critic Valerie Complex and a few other women of color, it sounded like across the board, they weren't getting the same opportunities as others. When I talked to the facilities that weren't providing it, they had all kinds of different excuses. So Larson's comments were internalized and can be seen reflected in the comments on Rotten Tomatoes, which include gems like these. Why Marvel decided to cast a very vocal racist and sexist aimed at white males, I'll never know. As a white male, I don't think Brie would want me watching this movie. And once Brie went on an anti-white male tirade, I lost interest in this movie. That last comment about Larson going on an anti-white tirade is a direct reference to her comments about a wrinkle in time's critical reception. Quote, I don't need a 40 year old white dude to tell me about what didn't work in A Wrinkle in Time, Larson said. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what it meant to women of color, biracial women, to teen women of color. Am I saying I hate white dudes? No, I am not. What I'm saying is if you make a movie that is a love letter to women of color, there is an insanely low chance a woman of color will have a chance to see your movie and review your movie. Which seemed to be the exact right thing to say to rile up some of the more thin-skinned fans of Marvel films. Larson has been making inclusivity a top priority for the Captain Marvel rollout, but the message has been predictably misinterpreted by some who think she's just out here shutting out white males entirely. Some have even gone so far as to lodge the same complaints about Captain Marvel as a certain subset of trolls did about Star Wars The Last Jedi. During the campaign against The Last Jedi, an alt-right internet group named Down With Disney's treatment of franchises and its fanboys claimed responsibility for an organized attack of negative reviews in an attempt to make the movie's Rotten Tomatoes score low. A moderator for that same group readily responded to a message from the Huffington Post and explained that the reason behind the attack stems from a growing dislike of the entire Star Wars franchise, particularly the introduction of more female characters. The moderator also believed that men need to be, quote, reinstated as rulers of society. The group then organized a bot that would flood Rotten Tomatoes with reviews of the movie and even went as far as to include some positive reviews so their scent could be thrown off. But the bot was not nearly as efficient as they hoped. There was supposed to be a trilogy of books and then some after set in the Legends canon, but Lucasfilm executives Kathleen Kennedy and Pablo Hidalgo wanted to pursue their own feminist agenda. I was never going to like The Last Jedi anyway because it erases everything the extended universe ever did. Sadly, this wasn't the first time an organized campaign of trolling to lower a film's Rotten Tomato scores has been unleashed. Last February, there was an organized effort by disgruntled fans to attack Black Panther with false negative reviews, citing complaints about how Black Panther is too focused on black superheroes. The same group, down with Disney's treatment of franchise and fanboys, also took credit for attempting to sink Black Panther's Rotten Tomatoes score. Of course, we all know that Black Panther was unshaken by the coordinated efforts as it's the ninth biggest movie at the worldwide box office with a gross of over $1.3 billion and is nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, the first superhero movie to ever be nominated in that category. The coordinated effort of online targeting of films seen to be anti-white or anti-male is sadly nothing new. The 2016 all-female Ghostbusters remake was plagued by harassment of the cast as well as Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb collective downvoting. The most shocking moment of that campaign was when hackers released nude photos of Leslie Jones alongside images of her driver's license and passport. Now, with the false reviews of Captain Marvel attacking the concepts of diversity, be it gender or race related, it's clear this is a pattern of highly organized parties determined to damage a movie they view as being both anti-white 
and or anti-male. When it comes to Captain Marvel, the film is currently tracking for a $120 million opening weekend. And while that would be a bit shy of Black Panther's four-day holiday weekend take last year, it puts it ahead of Iron Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, and neck and neck with Iron Man 2, Marvel entries which were all considered very much a success. For as motivated and well-orchestrated these online review bombing campaigns seem to be, these coordinated actions don't really seem to impact the success of these films. Advanced ticket sales for Captain Marvel are the third biggest for any title in the Marvel Cinematic Universe behind Avengers Infinity War and Black Panther, that's according to Fandango. On top of that, Marvel's first female-led superhero joint is already pacing ahead of DC's Aquaman and Wonder Woman in terms of pre-sales at the same point and is tracking to open up to a huge $100 to $120 million weekend. Forecasts could easily be revised upwards as Disney makes its final marketing push. So really, at the end of the day, these campaigns are little more than performative displays at best that don't seem to impact the financial performance of a release at all. Let us know what you think about review bombing campaigns in the comments and if the trolls actually make any bit of difference in the success or failure of these movies. That's all for now. For everything else, subscribe to Complex on YouTube. For Complex News, I'm Hanuman Welch.